Let's turn our attention to the front runner in the race to be the Democrat nominee for president to stand against Donald Trump. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I'd like to welcome in Joe Biden for president correspondent to the Uprising podcast, the immediate past co-host of this program. <laughs> again with the immediate Timothy past, yeah. E. Donner. Welcome to the program, Tim. Ooh, I get the middle initial now. I did. Well, it's, uh, more, it's this, more formal now. We've it got, took you a long time. We've got Joe. He's in the race for sure. Yeah. We know that he went to the Steel City to rally Pennsylvanians uh, around his cause. And as a matter of fact, before I even let you talk about it for a second, I do want to play this one clip that just kind of caught my... Your discerning ear. Yeah, my discerning ear. And this is why Joe went... You might think, you know, he was supposed to go to Charlotte, but he didn't go to Charlotte. But, but he went to Pennsylvania. Why Pennsylvania? If I'm going to be able to beat Donald Trump in 2020, it's going to happen here. Yeah. It's going to happen here in Western Pennsylvania. With your help. With your help. We're going to be able to do that. Thank you. Well, with your help, with your help, I think we're going to be able to do that. We're going to be able to uh, do it. In Pennsylvania, Western Pennsylvania, Northeast Pennsylvania, places where uh, a little lately we've had a little bit of a struggle. But the truth of the matter is, uh, I think uh, I think we're coming back. I think we're coming back, Tim. What do you? We've had a bit of a struggle. We're coming back. Yeah, we had a struggle in the Obama Biden presidency. Yeah, right. right. He and wants now, to bring it back. And Scott. now under the Trump presidency, when the war against coal and the war against everything, I mean. You can't put any solar panels in, in Pittsburgh, okay? I mean, you can, but it's it's ridiculous. So you actually need to burn some fossil fuels, and those people uh, – I see you shaking your head. Go, no, go no, ahead. no, <laughs> no. Down with the fossil fuels, Scott. Uh, look, Lunch Bucket Joe has done his best to position himself – and he did in this in this rambling speech. You're saying uh, Joe from Scranton and Claymont. Yeah, Joe from Scranton, uh -huh. where he last visited probably 49 years ago before the he started you know, his— the, the last time he ran for president, I'm uh, sure he, he, right. he went through. Right. Come on, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> he, goes, he goes every time he runs for president. The 40-plus years he spent as what I call a permanent politician. And, you know, I'm not going to focus— particularly like a lot of people did on all the stumbles that he had mm -hmm. in this sort of bumbling opening speech to a half empty gym somewhere in Pittsburgh. And, and he put himself back on the side of union people. But you know, the, the essential problem with his campaign, which already has morphed 180 degrees from I hate Trump more than anyone. And, and he's a, a, a metaphysical threat to the future of the country to I'm going to be lunch bucket, Joe. I'm going to work for you. I'm going to get you those good paying jobs. He's running on jobs in an economy with record low unemployment in every single demographic group, including the ones most precious to Democrats being blacks and Hispanics when and I, women, when not I, to mention when I Asians. The drudge report this morning, there was a banner headline and I'm reading it now. Envy of the world. Unemployment, 49-year low. Wage hits 2777 an hour. Stock market, endless rally. So well, what are you going to is... Are you going to believe Joe Biden or your lying eyes, yeah. Scott? Well, I mean, you, can, you can have an economy where uh, regulation is reduced and uh, free markets are allowed to flourish, or you can have one where Joe Biden comes in and uh, basically appoints – People to shut down the the all all those fossil fuel uh, industries, right? And and all the jobs that go with it. Although they're going to teach them how to code, Tim. Don't, don't worry it, about that's that. That's it. Yeah. Well, you know, here's what I like in uh, Biden's message about jobs during a booming economy and record low unemployment. It would be like if John Kerry had run for president in 2004 after the Afghanistan and Iraqi wars and said what we need is more wars we need we don't have enough we wars in the bush administration we need to go beyond afghanistan and beyond iraq to 
Syria and who knows where else. It 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 would be. It, I liken it to that, Scott, because we're talking about. I mean, the economy should be something, and jobs should be something that Democrats should scrupulously avoid talking about because it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't the, register the, to their because benefit. Because of the Obamavilles that that popped up yeah. after oh, that's a, uh, during that's the uh, during yeah. the Biden uh, uh, the Obama Biden presidency, uh, you know. It's a uh, the alliance between you know the destitute and the professional class is what we had then, and now we have a president who, uh, fine, you may say he he advocates for the rich and also the working class, You're right? The working the class. working class, the Lunch people who Joe. the people who Tim do not want a government program to get through the, with their life. They want the government to basically have a. a a minor safety net, and then just to leave them alone. You sure uh, by about and that? Large. You sure about well, that? Well, Joe thinks, Tim, and I have a a three pack of clips here. Okay, uh, we're going to get to play the the Biden cliches first because people love hearing the soaring rhetoric. And how many cliches can you, be put Tim, in the shortest period as of time? Uprising Joe Biden for President Correspondent. Decide if you want to talk about the unions first or the cliches. Let's first. go with the cliches first because right, we already ahead. talk about how I wasn't going to focus on the the at least a dozen right. stumbles that he made. And I heard um, the, and I heard the the slurring compilation as the well. The slurring which compilation, I yes. think, is a little overblown, but also it is indicative. Also, it's not inappropriate to say he's not a young man, and what's he going to be like? In four years, meaning his his acuity and uh, yeah, maybe that's he seems like he has crossed some sort of threshold into being a grandfatherly type of candidate and person. He's a little bit slow, yeah. a little bit slurred. He stumbles a little too much and he has the appearance of an old man mm -hmm. and and i say that not as a personal attack on him but he does appear that way that's just i mean Ber look bernie <laughs> sanders is older than him yeah, yeah. no bernie sanders is and he older has than a lot him. of vigor yeah and he, he has a lot of vigor that. he does not have that right that, yeah right for all the things we hate about bernie sanders, sanders. Or, or think are disqualifying that's not one of them seems not to be one of that's them at true. all 